Hey everyone, I'm Boone, and on today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to punch up your boring video shots using the Rotobrush tool in Adobe After Effects. I'm going to show you how to use the Rotobrush tool to help you color correct, fake a shallow depth of field, place text in the middle ground, create a 3D environment, and animate fake camera movements. All right, so I'm inside of my project here and I've got my boring clip pulled up. You can see this was shot all natural light outside and there's no movement, nothing really going on. I'm just simply standing in the middle of the frame here. Now, how can I spice this up and add some movement, make it more dynamic? Well, one way I could just start to add some effects and try to tweak them, but one really versatile method is rotoscoping. So what this is gonna allow me to do is pull this clip apart. I can essentially isolate myself here and then pull it out and put it on another layer separate from my background. And then I'm gonna be able to apply effects to the foreground and the background separate from each other, which is gonna give me a whole lot of creative options. Now, while I was shooting this, I also captured what's called a clean plate. And that's essentially the same shot without me in it. And this really makes compositing a lot easier. If you're doing rotoscoping, you're gonna be able to put this behind and you're not gonna to have to paint in the background in Photoshop or do any extra work like that. So if you plan on doing any rotoscoping, try to capture a clean plate in the field it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Okay, so to spice this up, I'm gonna to need to separate the foreground from the background, and I'm gonna do that using the Rotobrush 2 tool. So right up here, you can see Rotobrush tool. And now to actually do the rotoing, I need to open up my clip in the layer panel. So for that, I'll just double click on the clip, it launches in the layer panel, and now I can see my Rotobrush tip. So to control the size of this to make it larger or smaller, I'm gonna hold the control key and then click and drag up and down. And you can see here, I can resize it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a selection and then Rotobrush uses what's called Adobe Sensei Tech, which is machine learning. So essentially all I need to do is work on creating a good selection and then let Adobe Sensei do the rest. It will automatically propagate and roto it itself. But the key is I need to create a good selection first to tell that machine learning or that artificial intelligence where the edges are. So to start, I'm just gonna kinda of click and drag here. It's kinda of like magic wand style and then it's gonna to try to automatically find those edges and whoa, that's the best I've seen so far. You can see on the edges here, it did a pretty dang good job except for right here. So I can add and subtract from the selection using the Alt key to subtract. So I'll just subtract this big chunk here. One really important step that you cannot forget to do is after you make your selection, look over at the effect controls panel, you'll see the Rotobrush and Refine Edge effect, which is applied on your clip. Be sure, sure, sure that you change the quality to best. Otherwise, you're gonna get a real low quality edge. And now I'm just gonna work my way around the edges. Now I can toggle different views here. I can toggle the alpha here. I can look at the alpha boundary and then I can look at an alpha overlay. And this selection's looking pretty darn good. I think I'm ready to propagate it. I'm gonna allow the Adobe Sensei Tech to take over. All I really need to do now is hit the spacebar key and then go grab a cup of coffee because this part can take a little while, especially if your clip is long or if you use this Refine Edge tool. Now what Adobe Sensei in After Effects is gonna do, it's automatically gonna propagate this and roto it. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. I can see, you know, a little bit of gunk around my ear here, and then still there's a problem with that arm. But for the amount of work I just put into this, this is looking pretty darn good. And now it's time to go grab another coffee because I need to click the freeze button, which is essentially gonna lock this in. All right, so I can still go back in here and make some fine tune adjustments to the Rotobrush mat. If I wanna bump up the feather a little bit, or if I wanna shift the edge back by just a little bit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and close the layer panel and then it's gonna update here in the comp panel. And now I can turn my clean plate back on. And now I've essentially got my two layers, my portrait, which is my foreground, and my clean plate, which is my background. Now one of the first things that's really bothering me about this particular shot is how bright the background is. And it's really taken attention away from my beautiful face. So what I can do is add some effects to the background and try to bring it down. So I'm gonna to go to window and open up effects and presets panel. And I'm going to search for hue and saturation and I'm going to apply this to the background or the clean plate and all I'm really going to do here is turn down both the saturation and the lightness by about negative 25. Now the real key here is to make subtle adjustments and then take a look you know bring it down a little bit take a look at it because if you aren't careful you can get a look that that really ironically will look like you shot it on a green screen so you don't want it to look fake. All right, so that's already looking a lot better. Now, if you look at it before and after, it's looking pretty good. It brings the brightness down and the saturation down to bring more of your attention. One other issue that's kind of bothering me is how sharp a focus all the background is. So what I wanna do now is create like a fake 
uh, shallow depth of field effect to kind of blur out this background. So I can do that by simply throwing a blur on this clean plate. So I'm gonna grab a Gaussian blur, put it here. And again, I don't wanna bring this too high, otherwise it'll look a little too fake here. So maybe somewhere around 12, just soften it up a little bit. And again, I'm gonna toggle this on and off. That's looking a bit better. Now one thing that this is gonna do, uh, once you start adding all these effects and you make any dramatic changes on them, any of the edge defects that you have on your roto are gonna become very apparent very quickly. Another really popular technique that people like to utilize when rotoscoping is to place text in the middle ground. And it's really simple. Once you've rotoed your clip, simply create a new text element, and I'll kind of center this up. Text goes here. And it's really as easy as dragging this in between my foreground and my background, and there we go, got my text. Now I have a few different layers here and they're separate, so I can create a 3D environment and utilize all the benefits of 3D. So to do that, I'm just gonna tick on all these little 3D layers for uh, each of my layers here, and then I'm gonna right click and click on new camera and I'll go with the default settings here so I'm gonna grab my portrait I'm gonna pull this out and we'll just give it some space here I'm gonna grab the clean plate I'm gonna back this up and you know what? I'm gonna grab s hit the, hit the s key and just scale it up not quite that much but we'll scale it up a little bit and now if I look at a top view let's see what we got going on here okay we got the portrait we got the text and we got the clean plate and this is another technique I could use to fake a shallow depth of field. And as compared to using this Gaussian blur here, what I can do, I can go to the camera here, go down to camera options, and then I can turn on depth of field. And as I crank up the aperture and the blur level, you're really gonna start to see um, some of these start to blur here. But the problem is the focus isn't set to the portrait layer. So that's really easy to fix. I'm gonna grab the camera and shift click portrait. And then I'll go to layer, camera, set focus distance to layer and I can just link that up as well. So now any animations I make are gonna be set to my portrait. And as I crank this up, let's say I crank the blur way up, now it's gonna blur out that background and it's gonna blur out the text as well. And now this will operate like a real camera. All right, so that's really cool. I've got the depth of field, I got a camera, I have a whole 3D environment here. Now let's really utilize the power of 3D and create a camera move. What I'm gonna do is, let me just grab the camera, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna go to the transformation properties and I'm gonna set uh, keyframes for both point of interest and position at the beginning. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna grab this pan tool, the pan under cursor tool. Let's click a starting point. Let's say we want it to go from left to right. I'll have it go from here. And then I'm gonna go all the way to the end and have it animate kind of this way. And let's see how that looks. Now the really cool thing about this technique is that I get that parallax in between the layers here. And the more I pull these apart on the Z axis, the more parallax I'm gonna see here. Okay, so there you have it. That's Rotobrush for Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell.